In this video, we're going to look at solving a formula for a given variable. And some of these can be really complicated and some of them can be easy. So let's just start with something that's easy to kind of get the idea of it. Let's start with a formula that hopefully we all know. And that is area equals length times width. And of course, I'm talking about a rectangle. And we have the length and the width. It really doesn't matter which one is which. And to find the area of this figure, we take the length times the width. And there's lots of area formulas. Maybe we'll use another one here in a minute. All right, so how many variables are in this formula? Hopefully you'd say three. We've got A for area, L for length, and W for width. And right now, this formula is solved for L, or excuse me, solved for A in terms of L and W. All right, so what that means is that the A is by itself on one side of the equal sign. Okay, the A is by itself, it's A equals, area equals. This is solved for area in terms of length and width. So in terms of is whatever's on the other side of the equal sign, whatever variables are on the other side of the equal sign. Um, if we had, oh, let's do the perimeter of a rectangle. Let's put that one over here and we can work with that one too. That's a good one. How do we find the perimeter of a rectangle? We do 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So this formula is solved for P in terms of L and W. Some formulas may only have one other variable on the other side. Actually, I'll just make up an equation that doesn't necessarily have to be the formula for anything. This could be like the equation of a line, y equals 3x plus 1. So this formula or equation is solved for y in terms of x. So it's only what other variables are on the other side of the equal sign. We have these constants, 3 and 1, in this equation, and in the perimeter formula, we had constants of 2 and 2. But when we talk about what variable the formula is solved for and what it's in terms of, it's only the variables that we care about. So y is in ter what, this formula is y in terms of x, this one p in terms of l and w. So solving a formula for a given variable is basically changing what the equation is solved for and what it is in terms of. So let's say, let's go back to this area formula and the directions might say to solve this formula for L. Okay, so what that means is when we're all done, we want it to look like L equals. We want to get L by itself on one side of the equal sign. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our skills of solving equations just like we would if we wanted to get L by itself and the W and the A were numbers. All right, so we want to get this L by itself on one side of the equal sign, which means we want to get rid of this W. So if this W was a number like 2 or 5 or something and it was multiplied by the L, what would you do to both sides to get rid of it? Hopefully you're saying, are you saying it? Divide, right? We're going to divide both sides by W. So this W divided by W is 1, so we're just left with L on this side of the equal sign. And on the other side of the equal sign, we have area divided by width. So this formula now is solved for L. And you could write it the other way if you wanted. You could write L equals A over W. It doesn't matter what side of the equation the L is on, just that the L is by itself on one side of the equal sign. So now we have length is area divided by width. All right, this formula here, area equals length times width. And this formula here, length equals area divided by width. Those are the same exact formula. It's not a different formula. It's just a different way to write the same formula. We could also solve this formula for W. And we would do it the same way by dividing by L. So if we wanted to solve for W, we would take and we would divide both sides by L. And we would come up with the statement that area divided by length equals width. And that is definitely true, right? So these three versions are three different versions of the same exact formula. This one is solved for A. This one is solved for L, 
right? And then this one down here is solved for W. And we would say it's solved for W in terms of A and L. So the big deal here is you want to just use the same strategies that you've been using to solve equations, which is to do stuff to both sides in order to get something by itself on one side of the equal sign. Let's look at this perimeter one. Maybe we'll come back to this y equals. Okay, what is this solved for right now? What variable is it solved for and what is it in terms of? Hopefully you said that it's solved for p because the p is by itself and it's in terms of l and w. I'm gonna run out of space. So the directions might ask us to, we could solve this for l or solve this for w. Oh, what do you want to pick? Let's solve this formula for L. All right, so we want to get L by itself. What can we do to both sides to get L by itself? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come over here. I'm going to get rid of all this, and I'm going to make up a similar problem, except I'm going to put other numbers in for the variables. If you're not sure how to do these problems, it always helps to put numbers in. So let's say I had something like this. All right, we're going to solve for L. So I'm just going to pick, I'm picking these numbers totally out of the air. I'm going to let P be 100. I'm going to leave the L in there, and I'm going to let W be 10. Okay, what would you do to solve this for L? Well, hopefully you, you would figure out what this is, which is 20, right? And then you would subtract it from both sides. Now, I'm not going to write 20 here just to make a point. Hopefully, you'll see what I'm doing here in a minute. That's the first thing you would do. So guess what? That is the first thing you do over here. But instead of 2 times 10, you're just subtracting 2 times W. You're getting rid of that 2W. Now, if you have the numbers, it's easy because you can simplify it, right? How would you simplify this? Well, you would take 2 times 10 and get 20. You'd do that first, right? And then subtract it from 100. So basically, you would end up with the answer to this, which is 80. And I know you're saying, just write 80. But what I'm trying to get across here is over here, we can't figure out what the answer is. We've got P minus 2W. And like I said over here, by the order of operations, we would have to take the 2 times the 10 first before we subtract it from 100. So I can't do 2 times W because I don't know what W is. So all I can do is write this. And I know that seems weird. <laughs> but that is the answer okay you're basically just moving stuff around you can't figure out any answers when you're solving a formula for a variable because you don't know any of the numbers you're just moving your variables around all right what would you do next over here to get this L by itself well hopefully you're saying divide by 2 and in this case we would get an answer it would be 40 right over here I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna divide everything by 2 and those twos are going to cancel, and that is my answer. So let me write it. Oh, let's write it over here. So we would have L equals perimeter minus 2 times W. Take that whole thing and divide it by 2. And that would be your answer. All right, hopefully you're kind of getting the idea. I know it's weird because you're not figuring out any numbers or any values. You're just rewriting and manipulating the formula. So now this is solved for L because L is by itself. Let's try a couple more. Maybe you want to pause the video while I put up this next example. Okay, I mean pause it after I put up the next example and try it. Let's do, no, I'm going to make it, how about this? Let's do with three variables. Um, S equals X plus 2Y plus W. And I want you to solve this for W. Now, I'm not even telling you what this formula represents or what it stands for, and it doesn't matter. Okay, We just need to get W by itself. Sometimes you'll know what the formula stands for, and sometimes you won't. All right, so if you want to, you can pause it and give it a try. All right, so we want to solve for W. So we need to get rid of this X, and we need to get rid of this 2Y. And both of these terms are added to W. So in order to get rid of them, we're going to have to subtract them from both sides. So I'm going to subtract X from both sides, and I'm going to subtract 2Y from both sides. I'm going to go ahead and do this all in one step. Now, on the left-hand side of the equal sign over here, 
I have three terms and none of them are like terms. S minus X minus 2Y. So I can't really simplify that. They're not like terms. All I can do is write this. S minus X minus 2Y. That's it. And then on the right hand side, I'm left with W. Boom. That's it. We are solved for W. Okay. If S is equal to X plus 2Y plus W, then to find W, you would take S, subtract X, and subtract 2Y. Let's try one more with that Y and X business that I had before. Oops. Um, you're going to have to do this a lot probably when you start studying more about graphing lines. And that's why this is probably being taught to you right now to gear you up for that. So let's say you have the equation um, 2x minus 6y equals 8. Okay. Now this particular formula or equation is not solved for any variable. We wouldn't say that it's solved for 8. Okay. It's not solved for anything in terms of anything because none of the variables are by themselves on one side of the equal sign. We want to solve for y. And this is, like I said, this is going to be a skill that you'll use when you're graphing lines. You're going to have to solve for y to find some characteristic of a line and then be able to graph it quickly. All right, what do we want to do first? So I'm going to put this y in red. We want to get this y by itself. All right, what would you do first? Well, like I said, if you're not sure what to do, you could put some numbers in for everything else. So let's let's say x is 5 and then I'll leave the 6y and this is 8. Okay? All I did was just put a number where the x was just to kind of help me think about how to do this problem. If I'm not really sure what to do, I'm just going to kind of think and pretend that that x is an actual number. Well, what would I do? I would figure out what this is, which is 10, and then I would subtract it from both sides, right? So that's exactly what I want to do up here. Whatever this number is, whatever this 2x is, I want to subtract that from both sides. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay, what am I left with? On the right hand, excuse me, the left hand side, I'm left with negative 6y. Little cautionary tale here. When that negative's in front of that 6, it belongs to that 6, so you have to bring it down with the 6. Equals, now how do I do 8 minus 2x? Okay, if you're thinking 6x, I want you to just pinch yourself really hard so you don't do that again. Not too hard. Don't pinch yourself too hard. 8 minus 2x is not 6x. These are not like terms. Think about the order of operations like I did over here. You would have to subtract. You'd have to figure out what 2x is first um, before, you, before you subtracted. Let me just make that point with this down here. I think that's good. So if I wrote over here that I wanted to subtract 2 times 5. Instead of writing 10, I'm going to write subtract 2 times 5. So now I have 8 minus 2 times 5. Is that 6 times 5? No, right? Because you have to do multiplication before subtraction. Just like this up here, this is not 6 times x because I have to do the multiplication before I do the subtraction. But I can't do the multiplication because I don't know what x is. So all I can write is 8 minus 2x. You see what I mean? You can't make this down here. This is not 6 times 5, right? Because you'd have to, so if you were thinking that, you have to erase that from your brain, okay? So where are we? We've got to get y by itself. Do we have y by itself yet? Oh, so close. Not quite. We have this negative 6 we need to get rid of. So what would we do to both sides to get rid of this negative 6? Hopefully you're saying divide. So let's do it. We're going to divide this side by negative 6, and we're going to divide this side by negative 6. You have a couple choices here. You can divide the entire side by negative 6, or you can divide each term by negative 6. And I think I'll show you both ways. Actually, um, let's do it this way first. You can divide the entire side by negative 6. Let's get rid of my little thought bubble person so we have a little more room. So my negative 6 divided by negative 6 gives me 1. That's great. That gives me 1, right? 1 times y is just y. That's what I want. I want y by itself, so I have that. Now on the right-hand side, I have 8 minus 2x 
all over negative 6. And this fraction can actually reduce. And actually the easiest way to see it reduce is to split it apart like this. That's a lot of negatives. I'll show you another way here in a minute too. Um, when you have two things divided by 6, you need to divide each of them by 6. So I could have done that at the beginning up here. So if I reduce this, I get uh, negative 4 thirds. Now here you have a minus and a negative, so that's going to end up being a plus. And then that would reduce down to 1 third x, which we can then put back together if you wanted to. I'll say when you start doing lines, this is going to be a good answer. This is how you're going to want to write it when you start graphing lines, which I was telling you, you're probably going to have to use this in the future to graph lines. But for now, your book or your computer, whatever you're using, would probably also accept this answer if you put it all back together again. All right, this is going to be a good answer for the future. So maybe just start practicing that. In order to practice that from this point, when we had negative 6y equals 8 minus 2x, you can divide each term by negative 6, like this. That's another way to write it. So then these would be 1, so you'd have 1y, which is just y, and then that would reduce to negative 4 thirds, and then a negative divided by a negative is a positive, and that 2 6 reduces to 1 third x. So you get the same thing. I kind of like that way a little bit better instead of dividing the whole thing is divide each thing. But it's good that you know that that is the same procedure, dividing the whole fraction or dividing each term. What you can't do is just divide like one part of it. You couldn't just divide the 8 and not the 2. You have to do the whole side. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other. One last little thing I see here that students struggle with a little bit is right here. When you have 8 divided by negative 6, they're not really sure where to put the negative. So let me say, if you have 8 divided by negative 6, that's exactly the same as negative 8 divided by 6, or it's exactly the same as pulling the negative out in front, negative 8, 6. Those are all the same. So you'll see what I tried to do here, even though it's a little bit high. I pulled the negative out in front, and I just called this fraction negative 4 thirds. I w that's what I would do. You wouldn't really say 4 over negative 3. You could though, I mean, but generally you just pull it out in front and call the fraction negative 4 thirds.